Yo guys, what's going on? Hope you're all absolutely blessed. Today I'm gonna to be showing you the only plugin that you need inside of Photoshop. And I mean it when I say that. This is like having 10 different plugins all in one. This is not a sponsored video. This is just a plugin that I absolutely love. They have not paid me to promote them, but I use them all the time for personal projects and for my clients. And for me, it was definitely worth the investment. You can do a free seven day trial and I'll leave a link to that in the description so you can see if you like it. So on this document here, I've got three different fonts and I'll leave a link to those in the description as well if you like them and I'm gonna use these to show you what the plugin can actually achieve. So here in this new window, I have the font typed out and I've right clicked on the layer, I've rasterized it. And then I'm gonna select the layer. I'm gonna to go to filter, exposure software and hit eye candy. Now in the top left corner of eye candy where it says Chrome, you can see all the different things that it can do from shape effects to texture effects. Extrude is probably one of the most commonly needed things in Photoshop. The 3D editor in Photoshop is absolutely terrible and a lot of people don't want to use something like Cinema 4D, especially if they're only doing simple design work. And this sort of fills in the blanks. This is the extrude tool and I'm gonna show you roughly how to use it. You can decide how far away or how close the three dimensional effect is gonna be. You can apply shadows and light to decide how intense it's going to be and you also have an extrude distance if you have that set to zero and then you turn the taper up it's going to go directly into the center of the image something like that looks really cool and to do that yourself layer by layer would be an absolute pain in the ass and like i said not everybody wants to use a 3d editing software to do things like that this is a very quick way to get beautiful looking three-dimensional objects you can decide how intense the shadowing is going to be or how intense the brightness is going to be so if the brightness is all the way up and the shadow is all the way up then you'll have the most extreme version of the 3d effect you can also choose the light direction this will dramatically change how the piece looks and of course at the moment we have the extrude distance all the way down but you can drag this and decide where the ending point is going to be at any given moment whilst using this software you can left click and see the original text and if you turn the taper down it's not going to expand infinitely right this is the infinite expansion but if you have it pretty small then you get more of a subtle three-dimensional effect so something like that that looks very nice as well they're both going to have their different uses and then very quickly you can get something like this if you create a logo you can give your client three different versions to use on their social medias now one of the next effects that i see used all of the time and this is the chrome effect so i'm going to rasterize this where's the middle there it is filter exposure software eye candy and now i'm going to show you the chrome effect okay now this is really huge effect but it does take a little bit of learning to make it look good because obviously this doesn't look great the liquid one i think is probably the coolest one and the outside bevel means it's going to bulge out like it's kind of melting chrome I think this is really cool. So if we choose one like this, you can then decide the lighting profile. So I'm gonna choose this one, the outside bevel, and I've got it set to liquid. Now over here in the reflection map, you can choose what is reflecting off of it. So this doesn't really suit. There's so many different options with this and I'm gonna put on screen a logo that I made using this effect. You can see here on my Instagram, I think this is a really hard aesthetic. It's slightly bubbly. It's slightly distorted the logo so it's not like perfect edges, but man, I think that's a really hard piece. So yeah, this was the version that I used. I used the sun and clouds version and then you can decide how much it's gonna be blurred on the inside or if it's gonna be quite strong. You've then got the option to round the corners, which is gonna slowly curve away at your logo. And then you've got the bevel width. So obviously all the way up and you're basically just blowing the logo up like a balloon uh, and potentially crashing your Photoshop as well. By changing how round the corners are, you can add a bit of expression to the logo. So by default, it's gonna try and use every single part of the image. And the further you go, the more simple it is. You can get some really cool shapes and really cool aesthetics by doing this. Look how fire that is, man. It's like melted chrome on your logo Jeez! and then once you've made the effect right you can just go up to the top and you can press it again and it will do the exact same thing to another layer look at that drippington man that is absolutely fire so yeah now you know how to use the chrome you know how to use the extrude effect okay so this next effect that we're going to use is going to be the flame effect okay this is going to set fire to your design now some of this is going to look horrible some of it's going to look amazing and it's going to take a lot of trial and error to figure out you know what is what and what looks good but to keep things simple off the bat mask selection is going to make the difference between it being only behind your image which could be a cool effect that could definitely work and get a cool design but often you're going to want it to actually interact with the scene so you can see now it's going over the thumb it's coming out of some of the letters it's going over some of the words in the color section you can actually change what color the flame will be which is pretty cool if you make something that you like like i think this flame that i've just created is really cool you can go ahead and add it as your own preset so i could call this one so i could call this one blue flame and then custom 
blue flame and then I can save it and then I can use it whenever I want. You could have it coming directly up as well. Maybe that looks better actually. Come on, tell me that's not hard. That's hard. Yo. Alright, so for this one we're going to use the drip effect. So we're going to rasterize our text. Go into the exposure software, select the presets and go to drip. This is essentially going to start to change your text and put drips on it, right? And there's all different kinds of drips. You can choose how long you want them to fall for. You can choose how wide you want them to be. You can make them three dimensional so they have like lighting effects or just completely flat. And you can taper them to make them either really drippy or already thick. And then when you've got something you like, you can just hit random seeds till you get one that you really like. In the preset page, you can realize this effect can actually do a lot more than that. And then you can have things like this, which you can distort. So mount length zero will be doing absolutely nothing. But the more you put it up, the more your text is literally just gonna melt. And then if you put it all the way down, you're gonna get like a grungy distortion effect. And the higher up you get, the more you're just gonna have like a simple wave pattern. As per usual, there's loads of different effects that you can choose from down in the preset section. And obviously if it's blue, it's gonna look like water, but if you make it red, it's gonna look like a blood effect. You could do a lot with all of these, you just gotta be creative. There's gonna be different uses all the time, depending on what you actually wanna do with it. The world is your toaster, as they say, man. Do they say that? I don't think they say that. And then something to remember, once you've created a design, you could go ahead and add a new effect to that design. So I could take the drip and I could make it a chrome drip. So like metal, liquid metal, you know? There's actually so much you can do with this plugin. Oh, look how hard that is now. Now it's starting to really look like liquid is coming off of it. If you'd like a part two with me coming up with some creative ideas using some of the final effects, which I'll have sort of flashing up briefly at the moment, then comment down below and drop a like. And I might make part two where we try again using all of these different effects to see what we can create. Because yeah, we've only really done about 10% so far. Anyway, if you like this video, drop a like. Comment down below if you'd like to see a part two. And subscribe if you're new to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, guys. See you in the next one.